I've been noticing lately that MX Linux is like really popular, and it got me wondering exactly why everyone seems to love MX Linux so much. Don't get me wrong, it's a great distro that ticks a lot of boxes. It really strikes a balance between being light on system resources while providing lots of great features. It has a, shall we say, unique default interface, but one that manages to look nice and clean, and its semi-rolling nature ensures that it's set on a stable Debian base while still providing frequent app updates. All in all, it's a really solid experience. But a lot of other distros also do these things really well, yet don't seem to get quite the same love and appreciation that MX Linux does. So I think that there's more to what makes this Midway distro so special. Let's have a look. I'm using MX23.1 here today, the latest refresh of the MX23 release, which is based on Debian 12 Bookworm. Whilst there are KDE Plasma and Fluxbox editions of MX Linux, the XFCE edition that I'm using here is their flagship, and thus likely sees the most fit and finish. As mentioned in the intro, that is likely part of the appeal for MX Linux. It's a great all-round package that provides a decent default experience that users can easily tweak and customize to their liking. But what I think really helps MX Linux stand out from the rest in this regard is the tools that it provides users in order to configure their system. For example, the XFCE desktop has a couple oversights, perhaps, in its system settings, with a few options that you'd expect being missing. One such example is configuring the system sound, which doesn't typically have a straightforward graphical panel on XFCE. Yet, MX Linux includes a custom settings page for configuring system sound effects, filling in this gap. But the custom MX tools go further than patching up a few missing settings. They include all sorts of utilities the users would often want to install anyways. Things like a live USB maker for easily flashing an operating system image to a USB drive, and a graphical package installer for installing .deb files. On the topic of packages, there's a fantastic package installer tool that provides a curated list of some of the best and most frequently installed apps across a myriad of categories, from alternate web browsers, file managers, desktop environments, and window managers. We've got additional themes and wallpapers here, and so much more. Oh look, we can even install children. Uh, oh. Okay. This tool even lets you easily search and install flat packs from Flathub or packages from various other repositories. But the MX tools don't stop there. They also provide simple applications for a lot of configuration or system admin tasks that would typically be rather time consuming or complex. Do you want to easily customize your terminal prompt? Well, no problem. There's a plethora of options to tweak its appearance and functionality. I personally like this double-lined one here. Do you want to adjust the boot screen or how long the grub menu is displayed for? I personally always want to lower the amount of time that grub is showing on boot. Well, there's no need to edit config files here. You can do it in just a few clicks with the boot options tool. Or maybe Grub is all messed up again, because that always seems to happen at some point. Well, instead of running a gauntlet of commands, you can repair it in just a few clicks with the boot repair tool. Oh, and all those cleanup tasks that you should probably be doing regularly, but never bother to set up. Things like removing old log and cache files, or old kernels. Well, now you can set all of them up in just a couple clicks with the cleanup tool. Or, for that matter, you can automate just about any task by using the job scheduler. And that's just scratching the surface of what the MX tools can do here. And I think that these tools and how they provide such a seamless way to do otherwise complex or time-consuming tasks is a big part of what makes MX Linux so great. Honestly, more Linux distributions could use straightforward graphical configuration tools like these, because they make for a much smoother experience when configuring the system. 
And just to show how well this works, here's a look at what I was able to turn the system into entirely with the inbuilt graphical tools. Not running a single terminal command or manually copying theme files or anything. Being somewhat familiar with what I was looking for, this took me about half an hour, but there was nothing particularly complicated about it, and I think anyone could achieve a similar result in little more time. I've installed a new theme and icon set here, along with the plank dock, and I've reconfigured the default panel to only include the system tray icons and sit on the bottom corner of the screen here, next to my pinned apps in the dock. Now yes, all of this can absolutely be done on any distro running XFCE, but the fact that I was able to quickly achieve this entirely graphically through the included MX tools, and didn't even once need to open a terminal or copy some files is a truly refreshing experience and one that a lot of either less experienced users or anyone that just doesn't want to fuss in the terminal will appreciate. And add to all of that the fact that it's so easy to install alternate desktop environments or window managers here through the package installer and it's insanely easy to turn MX Linux into just about anything that you want. It provides all the necessary tools that make it really easy to make these tweaks and customizations without diving into the command line. Now there's no avoiding another possible reason why some users love MX Linux, and that's its lack of systemd for boot up. Systemd is one of numerous different init systems, which are what manage the boot process of the system. And systemd does that job fairly well, at least most of the time. But where some users take issue with systemd is that it now also manages a lot of other system level tasks as well, making certain processes that used to be highly configurable and modular from one another now all replaced with just systemd, for better or worse. But the debate behind that isn't what this video is about. Rather, the fact that MX Linux doesn't use systemd for startup, instead using a more traditional init system called sysv, is a plus for a lot of users. Now do note that I said it doesn't use systemd specifically for startup. That's because MX Linux does actually include systemd, but in a disabled state. This is because, again, for better or worse, some modern applications rely on systemd's services to work properly. So including it in the system, and just not using it for boot management, ensures that there won't be any issues with apps that are expecting systemd to be there. The end result with MX Linux is a system that is not only rock solid and highly customizable, because let's face it, a lot of distros can do that, but also a system that makes it easy to do traditionally complex things. When it comes to making a system easy to use, there are two possible approaches. Either setting defaults that the developers think the most users will want and removing the ability to tweak the complex options altogether, or implementing ways of tweaking those things in a simple and convenient way. MX Linux is one of the few distros that takes the second approach to the user friendliness issue by providing a fantastic set of utilities that make it a breeze to do configurations or repairs that would otherwise take far longer and be more difficult. It opens up the possibilities of tweaking the system to far more users than would otherwise be comfortable trying it out. But I'd love to hear what you think of MX Linux. Have you tried it in the past? And do you like the experience? Let me know in the comments. And for that matter, I do hope you liked this video. If so, I'd appreciate you pressing the usual YouTube buttons, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux. No children were harmed in the development of MX Linux or the creation of this video production.